Morning everybody. Morning. On the way to breakfast. Two days left here, Las Colinas Golf Country Club. Fantastic golf swing this morning from this young lady. I'm gonna talk a bit about maybe trying not to overcoach young people, those kind of ideas. Answer to yesterday's question, do you always hook the ball with a strong grip? Lots of people getting this right in the comment section, Matthew. I see a mixture of hooks and I see a mixture of cuts from strong grips. There's no pattern. In fact, you could argue the term strong grip, the weak grip could be, could be discussed. Yeah. What I do see though a lot with what we call strong grips is a decrease in loft, to be honest. That's yeah. a pattern, yeah. not for everyone. Thus, the term strong could still be applicable. Today's question, it's a topical one because I'm testing their full range of golf ball. Let's take Titleist's range of golf balls. Why do they make a full range? Like, what's the point? Post comments down below, let me know. They should hit that thumbs up button down there, shouldn't they, man? And that subscribe button. Oh, just tap it. making your own little breakfast bloomer there, man, aren't you? Little over easy, bruh. <laughs> you do do a lovely job at that. Look at it, layered. Mm -mm. So looking at a swing, there's a lot of really good movements in here. What we see is a fantastic pull away from the ball, very strong position up the top, love the wrist angles. Coming down in to hit the ball, she obviously is good at making contact, contact with the ball, and that ball is drawing maybe just left of target to onto it. It's a great swing. Possibly could be a little bit more dynamic at impact, maybe trying to get her off her right foot, but apart from that, it's gonna be all skill testing. First thing I want you to do with this golfer is some serious skill testing. So I've got a seven iron. Let's have some seven irons hit. Pan as low as they can send them out there. So maybe get the ball back, lean the handle forward, see what kind of patterns of shot she gets when she puts the ball not in the correct place. Next one, ball forward, how high can she hit it? And then in turn, which one is she better at? The low one or the high one? And the weaker one, you need to work on that. Looking at her swing, she does a lot of things right. She probably hits a lot of straight shots at a distance she hits it. She needs to start learning what happens if you hit with the face at this angle, at this angle. Maybe with the face pointing right, maybe with the face pointing left. Find out her skills at manipulating that ball. That's far more effective than getting her to do the correct movements. Let's answer your questions. Hello, Mark from uh, sunny Arizona. Just got done playing around the golf. My question, and I'm trying not to sound like a, uh, a sour grapes kind of guy, but it uh, comes about uh, bunker play. Just played a course, uh, got in a bunker, greenside bunker, like on the ninth hole or something like that, and ended up scrambling up and down, no problem. Got to three holes later, got to another greenside bunker. Thought I could play the same shot again, um, and ended up no sand. It was like almost like hitting concrete. Tried to splash it out and thinned it 30 yards, completely ruined the hole. My question has to do with uh, what you maybe go about to try and find out uh, if there's sand and if you do determine that there isn't sand in it, how, what's your technique playing it? Do you just chip it out or do you try and get under the ball a little bit harder? Uh, what uh, do you do? Uh, cheers bro! A common one with golfers about bunkers on sand or not. When there's no sand under the ball, you can normally see, to be honest. So it's almost like an experience thing. As you walk in, you can see and almost feel it as you just walk in if there's gonna be sand or not. And then what you do is accept it's gonna come out lower, often a bit faster, sometimes has a bit more spin on it, but it loses height, so it rolls on. So you accept your punishment and you accept that that bunker is the way it is. It's a shame, obviously we'd all want consistent levels of sand in every bunker, but it's just not how it works. I mean, I play some fantastic courses around the world and even if you get into the face of some bunkers there's more sand so you need to adjust I actually played a bunker shot today on one of the club testings I did and there was more sand and what I did is just tried to make a bigger explosion tried to make sure I didn't just duff it out so it's that kind of knowledge of knowing how it will react out of those different stands and try not to get frustrated with it because you are gonna get situations where the sand in bunkers 
does vary from place to place, from hole to hole. It's how you deal with it is the real skill. That's a lovely sandwich, Matt. It's a big one, really. I think we both to cut it again. <laughs> Two things just to finish. First point was talking about trying to get off your right foot that I mentioned. That's simply a case of you trying to just use your legs a little bit more on a downswing, feel like your hips and shoulders are opening up. Get away from feeling that you're just throwing your arms at it. Just get that body energizing a little bit more, I think won't do any harm. But the most important thing I want to see you do is this. young people need to stay creative. Coaching for so many years I think kind of dampens down the creative side for golfers. Keeping creative will learn new skills, flopping it high, flopping it low, downhill bunker shots, long putts, short putts, using slopes. That skill and imagination is what will lower your scores in the long run. And I'm not going to toot my own on this drive. You're going to calm that down? Yeah, I'm going to... Well, we have one day left in Spain. Flying tomorrow night at 9.30. Thanks for watching. Thumbs it up, people. Hit that subscribe button down there. Just subscribe. You get notified. Everyone's happy. Be a bit more sensible in my old age. <laughs>